Hello and welcome to another session of We Are Wednesdays when we take a closer look at a work from uh, Riverbrink's collection, the Samuel E. Weir collection. My name is Deborah Antonsik and I'm the director curator at Riverbrink. From time to time, I've been asked if there are any known forgeries in the Weir collection. And the answer is yes. So today we're going to talk about this work, this painting titled Bateau by an unknown artist. Uh, but signed very prominently by Raoul, by the artist's name, uh, Raoul Dufy, as you'll see in the lower left corner of the painting. So it's by an unknown artist, um, purchased by Sam Weir from the Roberts Gallery in 1952. Weir had the painting in his possession for several months prior to the purchase, during which time he deliberated whether he would acquire it. Before he made his final decision, he wrote to the artist in France, enclosing a photo of the work, to request copyright, that is the right to photograph and reproduce the painting, which he claimed to have purchased. And here we're looking at just a close up of the forged uh, signature from the lower left of the painting. So Dufy wrote back to say that the, the painting that was uh, sent to him, the photograph was a fake, a uh, faux, as you can see from the, the uh, note that he's written on the back of the photograph and signed and dated the 11th of February, 1952. So Dufy was a French artist, um, a painter, a ceramicist, a designer, an illustrator, he was born in Le Havre in Normandy in 1877. He studied locally at the Ecole de Beaux-Arts in Le Havre and won a scholarship to study in Paris in 1900. And here we're uh, looking at a photograph of Dufy taken before 1927. And you can see some examples of his work on the left side of the photograph. Dufy was initially interested in Impressionism but he became associated with the artists known as the Fauves or the wild beasts in English, a term coined by an art critic, uh, rather sarcastically reviewing the work of Henri Matisse and Andre Durand in the 1905 exhibition Salon d'Automne, The Fall Salon. And here we're looking at Henri Matisse's Madame Matisse or The, the Green Line from 1905. An example of the kind of work uh, that would have been in the exhibition and has been labeled uh, phobist. The colors employed by the artists, uh, the phobe artists are strikingly bold and they're non-naturalistic, often applied directly from the tube of paint and making sort of loose dabs of paint on the canvas. The forms of the subjects were also simplified, making the work appear almost abstract. The artists Matisse and Duren were exploring color theory and moving away from the realistic representation of three-dimensional space. So Dufy was very uh, interested in this style of painting and produced this work, Boats at Martigues, in 1908. The idea that representation could be drawn from the imagination that it was not constrained by realism was a compelling idea for Dufy's painting. He adopted painterly brushstrokes, simplified forms, and showed a preference for bright and bold pigments, especially the color blue. According to the artist, blue is the only color which maintains its own character. In all its tone, it will always stay blue. Under this influence, Dufy's painting became infused with color. Spatial relationships are ambiguous, the perspective is flattened, and it suggests at times a naive or an artist untrained in the conventions of perspective. Just as we see in this one, the obelisk at Hier from 1926. For a time, Dufy's work came under the influence of Cezanne, but by 1920, he returned to the bold colors of the earlier Fauve paintings. 
but the heavier brush strokes were replaced by thin washes like watercolor. And this is typical of the, the forgery in uh, the bateau forgery in our collection at Riverbrink with this thin wash of paint, not the heavy, uh, heavily applied paint of the earlier folk period. And here you can see again with the from the a close up detail of the signature, how thinly the paint is applied. So the forger was attempting to replicate this later style of the 1920s in the forgery. Dufy was a painter of leisure, of regattas, outings to the beach and the park, of horse races and boating. His birthplace, Le Havre in northern France on the English Channel, was a source of inspiration for his painting. He initially focused on the harbour and its bustling activity, but later included seaside recreation in the south along the Mediterranean. Dufy also designed fabric prints, from woodcuts and illustrations for books, and then ceramics and tapestries, and even sets for a ballet. A major exhibition in New York in 1949 may have attracted Sam Weir's attention, but we don't really know from his letters why he was interested in acquiring a Dufy. But the artist was featured in Life magazine at the time of the exhibition in 1949 and again in January of 1951, when the artist returned to New York to the, to the United States to undergo treatment for rheumatoid arthritis. After sending out some inquiries to his New York dealer, Sam Weir was made aware of a Dufy available in Toronto at the Roberts Gallery. He was also offered a sketch by Picasso at the same time. If the Dufy had been genuine, it would be the only post-impressionist work in the Riverbrink collection. After the take, taking the painting into his possession, we are corresponded with the dealer prior to the purchase. He described his dissatisfaction with the painting, claiming that after a while the painting was tiresome. He suggested his interest might be revived if the dealer reduced the price. Into the midst, midst of this conversation comes the information that according to the artist, the painting is a forgery. We are contacted the gallery. The seller insisted it was genuine and dug in his heels and the Roberts Gallery appeared inclined to believe the seller. A more detailed provenance, that is a history of ownership was provided. So we are once again contacted the artist who continued to insist the painting was a fake based on the photograph sent to him in France. In subsequent correspondence with Sam Weir, Dufy described his discovery of forgeries of his work in Germany, as well as in England and France, where he was in the process of suing one forger. In the end, Sam Weir decided to purchase the painting knowing full well that it was a painting, that it was a forgery, and paying less than a quarter of the original price. And so it remains in our collection. It may be that it, he was somewhat convinced by the seller and was interested in acquiring Bateau if the price was right, or perhaps it had grown less tiresome with time. We don't really know. Raoul Dufy died not long after in 1953. He continues to be a popular artist to forge. And our own little forgery remains an interesting curiosity in the collection. Thank you and look for another Weir Wednesday in the next few weeks. <laughs>